hello. Let's see the first slide. Yes. Have you ever seen uh, some gloves made like this in your life? No, that is good, because it would be an insult to uh, millions of years of uh, evolution and uh, to body intelligence, especially after a uh, Gever talk this morning. But have you ever seen some shoes like this? <laughs> yes. I know you have seen. These are very common. And there is not uh, a big difference with... Uh... <laughs> so what's the difference, you know? So the absurd thing is that hands and the feet are very similar. There are 26 bones, 33 joints. OK, so let's see what, uh, what happened when uh, our foot meets a shoe. This is a human foot. And it's, it has this shape, basically, because uh, it's a triangle. Because a triangle is like a tripod, gives you stability, you know. And uh, the wider this triangle, the more stability you have. And physical stability means also psychological stability. Because uh, body and mind are not two separate things, but in some way, they're one expression of the other one. So the problem is our shoe is, has a completely different shape, you know. It's, is a, also a triangle, but with uh, opposite direction. So when our foot meets uh, uh, a shoe like this, we have two possibilities. The first piece possibility is very radical, and uh, it's this. <laughs> you, you know, you need a, a high bank account and very low IQ to, <laughs> to achieve this kind of surgery. So the rest of us, what we do when we meet the shoe is just we squeeze our foot into, into the shoe. And the reason why is because the shoemakers or fashion designers didn't start from uh, uh, our foot, but they started from uh, a piece of wood or a piece of plastic. So they actually making shoes for Pinocchio, not for us. So instead of, you know, construct a shoe around our foot or for our foot to save its intelligence, the line of forces, we, what we do is de to deconstruct the lines, to deconstruct our foot to fit into a shoe, which is conceptually is not very different what, from what Chinese women were doing 100 years ago is basically the same process, the same direction, adapting our anatomy to an idea, instead of uh, the idea to our anatomy. So basically, uh, this is an X-ray of a Chinese woman uh, foot, and uh, 100 years ago, this is our foot. So we, are in the, we do something similar. So they were suffering for an idea, and we were suffering for an idea. They were thinking at least to be beautiful, and they were satisfied with the result. We think to be beautiful, and we are satisfied with the result. And uh, it needed 100 years to realize, you know, that this was something weird. And probably in 100 years, when uh, some archaeologists will find X-rays or uh, bones of uh, or our skeletons, probably they will think that we were aware, too, in 2000-something, you know? So what happens is that uh, at birth, only 1% of us has uh, some foot deformation. At f uh, one year old, we have almost 10%. 8% of people get uh, already a deformed foot by the, encounter with, the first encounter with shoes. Then at uh, age five, the majority of us uh, 60 percent as uh, uh, a deformation, succeeding getting a deformation that fits uh, the shoe. And by the age of 20, 80 percent, almost all, you know, have finally a deformed foot. So what happens with industrial design? It basically happens the same thing. I, I teach in different design academy, and in one of them, there are a lot of chairs given as a gift by the designers who come there to, to teach. And 
every year I, I taught there, I asked the student to go, uh, to go around to choose the, the chairs that uh, they, among all the chairs, there are tens of chairs of different kind of design, to choose the one they think is uh, the most comfortable and the one they think is the less, less comfortable. So every year they come out with the same two chairs. So they, they choose always this as the most comfortable and this one as the less comfortable. What is interesting is that they don't try the, the chair. So I ask them to try and to, to choose them blindfolded by experience, by feeling how their body responds to the, what happens to their body. So they retry all the chairs and they always come with the opposite result. They choose this as the most comfortable, which is very similar to the one you're sitting now, and uh, this one as a less comfortable. Because when they sit, conceptually, the concave shape is very appealing because uh, uh, seems to make you, you know, like uh, uh, in a comfort, to put you in a comfortable position. But when you experience, you actually, what happens is that you actually slump in a chair which is concave. That's why your chairs are not concave, for example. So, but the problem is more radical with chairs, you know. For example, we don't have shoes that fit with uh, human foot because uh, shoemakers start from these kind of molds, which has, you know, all kinds of shapes, but they don't have the shape of a human foot. It's, it's like this from century, and we are stu still doing the same things, you know. Uh, the equivalent of this for shoes, for uh, chairs, is this. These are in the international standards, and you see how ridiculous is the position that uh, is so to be, to fit the a human being. You know, if you look around, nobody of you is sitting like this, you know? <laughs> it seems like uh, from a, a physical education book from the 30s, you know, uh, from a totalitarian uh, country. So this, the reality is that people sit like this because we, we don't like to close this angle, you know? We don't like because it, com uh, it implies an effort. So this is the reality of how children use, uh, for example, sofas, you know. And the reason why is because we are not uh, uh, made like Pinocchio or like a puppet, uh, made of stick, of disjointed stick that we can put in every position without a problem. We are made also, we have kind of sticks like the bones, but we are made of flesh. So there are fascia, tendons, uh, ligaments, and uh, a nervous system which is very sophisticated, and when you move one, something, also everything has to be readapted. Re so this fits for a puppet, but doesn't fit for us. Because we are more like a tensegrity structure. A tensegrity structure have an, has a neutral position, uh, a position in which it comes at rest. Suppose these are elastics and, uh, and sticks. So what happened? is that this position, this neutral position, is very well known, at least from the space age, because it's a position that astronauts take in, uh, in, uh, in the space when there is no force in acting on their body. The same position you, you, if you go in a swimming pool without going to the space, which is very expensive, you can go in a swimming pool and just float so to just relax completely with your head out of the water and uh, just uh, look at the position you take. And you come out with a position which is more or less like this. And uh, this is very well known as being measured, you know. And uh, we're still doing chairs like this, you know. So the result is that today only 10% of the students uh, still have the lumbar curve, which is essential for, for uh, all the body functioning, all the, all the physical functioning. You know, because as we say that uh, there is uh, an interplay, you know, between uh, body and the psychological aspect. So when we are depressed, we take a C shape 
but also is through the reverse, that if we take a C shape, we are prone to depression, you know? So it's happening the same thing that is uh, happening with fashion design and industrial design in uh, architectural design. The problem is slightly different. The, it's different because uh, architectural design don't act upon our body in a mechanical way. It uh, acts through the nervous system. So our nervous system is designed, the function, the real function of the nervous system is to continually adapt the inner world, your body, to the external world. So any external stimuli, any external situation is going to, uh, to rearrange your body, to create something inside of you. So I asked the student to, uh, to choose which uh, contemporary building was, they were thinking was the most representative of uh, their uh, continent. So the European choose this one in Barcelona, and the Asians ones uh, were choosing this uh, from Peking. So let's see the first. The first, what you can see is that uh, uh, it has a very nice colors and uh, very nice texture on the outside. In the night, it's even more bright, very uh, outstanding beauty. How was this uh, result achieved? It was achieved by putting, instead of windows everywhere, uh, to, to put uh, blind panels, colored blind panels, and a grid of glass all around the building. But let's see what happens from the inside. If you have a lot of blind panels and small windows, uh, here and there, it becomes quite dark, you know, with little space. And if you see a window from close, what you see is, uh, is that big, that deep, and with some grid in front. Not different from a jail, for example. And that you can wonder how happy your nervous system is to live all day long, to work all day long in a place like this. So this building, when I visited this building, it was not possible to enter because it was uh, still in construction. But if you go in Chicago, there are the Sears Towers where you can, by paying, you can go at the last floor where there is what is called Sky Deck, which is basically a, a glass terrace uh, on the void, you know. And so you can stand there on the edge, and uh, it's very exciting for the first five minutes. <laughs> so imagine to stay in this kind of excitement all day long, you know? And for the nervous system, of course, it's more powerful if they s you see the void under. But because you have memory, in some way you know, you know that uh, you are in a, over the void, even if you if you're not seeing at the moment, but because you have seen before. So this was interesting. In a, at the entrance of a museum, there were some archaeological foundings uh, on the bottom. This was like uh, less than two meters high. And it was interesting to see how people react, you know, how the nervous system of people react to this kind of situation. So uh, couples were coming in, and the women were directly going on, uh, uh, on the side. The man made a couple of steps to show his... <laughs> 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 and then he joined the woman on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, men and women sh joined the same uh, nervous system. And it's, uh, even two meters, you know, is is uh, constructed by default as a signal of, uh, of danger. So you don't like to stay on the void. So in the past, the challenge for designer was to do something aesthetically pleasurable. And today is because of the environmental emergency, the challenge is to keep doing things which are aesthetically pleasurable, but also environmentally sustainable. Maybe in the future, the challenge for designers will be to do things that are aesthetically pleasurable, environmentally sustainable, and neurologically sustainable. 
the paradox or the situation we are in is that we are here in the third millennium and uh, we are wearing shoes where, which are not made for us, they are made for Pinocchio. We are sitting on chairs which are not made for us, they are made for Pinocchio, again. <laughs> and uh, we are living and working in buildings that uh, ignore how our, our nervous system works. And uh, maybe in the future, design can help us. Thanks.